Hello everyone, and welcome to Accountability's Combination Therapist and Car Repair. Whether you need to get over childhood trauma or need new wiper fluid, come to Accountability's. Today, I grouped you all based on your addiction. Let's start the circle and share why we're here. Hello, my name is How We Do It. Ever since they limited how many Pokemon cards I can buy, I decided to channel my addictive personality to something less harmful. Now I'm addicted to drugs. I, I don't do them or anything, I, I, I just like collecting them all. Look, this one's shaped like Wario. Hello, my name's Rich Mahogany, but you can call me Dickwood. Ever since someone said there were too many Fire Emblem characters in Smash, I've been addicted to defending Nintendo games online. One time, I blacked out, and three days later, I found out I wrote a thesis on how cutting Pokemon from Sword and Shield is a good thing. Oh, very good, very wrong. And you? <coughs> Hello, my name is Jack, my gang name is Bumbles McFumbles, representing Eastern Block Hate Club 1414 Life. And I don't know what I'm doing here! It says you were ordered by a court to be here. I don't recognize the state of Massachusetts as real. If I did, I'd sue him. It says you were arrested for publicly admitting to liking Sonic. Oh, he's fucked. Giga fucked. My grandpa was addicted to Sonic. Is he dead? No, he's just a loser. I don't see why that's a crime. I just said I like the games. Uh-uh. Talk like that isn't going to help. Let's start from the beginning. This Sonic... Is he related? He's a three foot tall cartoon hedgehog! That doesn't answer the question. <sighs> Got me there. All right, I'll go back to the beginning. Sonic the Hedgehog is one of my earliest video game memories. See, my first console was my dad's hand-me-down SNES. Follow me here. And the first game I remember playing for it was Speedy Gonzales Los Gatos Banditos. If you ever have any questions as to why I turned out this way, this is the answer. After having a little exposure to the N64, I got to play a GameCube at my friend's house. And she had this game called Sonic... Heroes? I didn't even know what a hero was, much less a Sonic, so I asked to play it. And I had such a blast! It was like some sort of 3D Speedy Gonzales game! Eventually, after a psychological warfare campaign against my parents, mainly consisting of me going, I want it, I want it, I want it! They relented and got me a GameCube for my birthday, alongside Luigi's Mansion. However, all I wanted was that sweet rush of Sonic, and I wanted it in my veins! Eventually, a Hollywood video in my neighborhood started to stock video games for rental, and they had it! The game of my dreams! Sonic... Adventure? DX? How do you even spell that? So it wasn't quite the elusive game that I wanted to get my hands on, but I had the blue funny fella on the front, so I had to get it! Turns out it was exactly what I wanted. Not only was there Sonic, but Yellow Sonic, Red Sonic, Boob Sonic, huh? And Metal Sonic! This game meant so much to me that I would ask to rent it for months. I'd play it, get stuck, cry, play more, return it, and the cycle of victimization would start all over again! This would lead to me buying Sonic Adventure 2 from GameStop with my own money, begging my parents for Shadow the Hedgehog, learning curse words from it and blaming it on Ed and Nettie, I swear I'm not lying, and salivating over Sonic for the Xbox. Although around this time my house burned down, so Sonic kinda took a backseat. But now I wanna take a look back through all these games, talk about my experience with them, development history, and their impact on the franchise as a whole. Where better to start than with Sonic's first 3D outing? Kinda. Yeah, Sonic had dabbled in 3D as soon as he could, whether it was on the Sega Saturn with games like Sonic R and Sonic Jam, or even Sonic 3D Blast on the Genesis. The blue blur was hopelessly addicted to 3D, and just like all addictions, it slowly rotted him away. Ah yes, the fabled Sonic 3D transition. I could go on and on about this for hours. And I will! See, Sonic's transition to 3D was- um, excuse me, Mr. McFumbles? Huh? We have a flyer that I think you should read before using that sort of language. What? No talk of Sonic's 3D transition. No saying Sonic was never good. No five minute long fight scene with the demonic representation of Sonic 06 in the middle of the video with bad green screen and cringy anime references! Is this Nazi Germany or Communist Russia? <laughs> Sir, I don't have to answer that. Oh, fascist Italy! So I've lost my best weapon, so it's time for the sidearm. Let's discuss the development of Sonic Adventure. So the late 90s were a far cry from how Sega spent the early 90s. From riding high with the Genesis, the Sega Saturn sent Sega crashing back down to Earth. A powerful piece of hardware for the time that they just so happened to bungle at every opportunity! First was the release date. The Saturn had a cute little day named after it. It was to be released on Saturn Day, September 2nd of 1995. However, video game newbie Sony had accidentally released one of the best-selling consoles of all time, and Sega was starting to feel the heat. 299. <laughs> So at E3 1995, they decide, ah, f it, it's released now, it's released now. That's right, 30,000 Saturns were released into Toys R Us like a plague of rats. Stores like Walmart and KB Toys responded with, what the f we love rats, and swore off selling Sega products, like 
the Sega Saturn when it was supposed to come out. This single decision to spring the launch of the Saturn onto the American market was more likely than not the decision that ended Sega's involvement in the console market at all. That's how disastrous it was. But at least the games were good, right? Well, problem two was the fact that the Sega Saturn didn't have the same appeal in America that it did in Japan. In the same way that the Xbox was the Halo machine, Saturn was the Virtua Fighter machine. The franchise was massive in Japan, but in America? Ew, I don't play Tekken ripoffs. So Virtua Fighter wasn't enough to draw people in, so what was? Well, how about Sonic? Yes, yeah, Sonic was an institution by this point. People loved the little prick and were sure to love whatever they slapped him onto. They were also sure the Saturn wouldn't fail. No original Sonic games were released on the Saturn, with us instead getting Sonic R and Sonic Jam, a racing spin-off game and a compilation game. Both have merits in their own right. For what it's worth, Sonic R isn't nearly as terrible as people make it out to be, and the model they used in Sonic Jam is personally one of my favorite 3D Sonic models. Ask the Wii U how going a whole console generation without a traditional entry in your flagship series goes. But that's not to say one wasn't in development. Sonic Extreme was a game that deserves its own look in the future. But for the time being, imagine what a game would be like if its development was built on top of an ancient Indian burial ground. So Sonic would sit out this generation as the Sega ship didn't so much start to sink as it began shoveling water onto itself to put out an engine fire. Sonic would soon be brought back in as the next generation of Sega consoles, the Dreamcast, was coming into being. Yuji Naka and Team Sonic were done making nights into dreams and f***ing over the Sonic Extreme devs by not giving them the engine. After that, they decided to tackle Sonic, who, for all intents and purposes, has gone dormant without a game on the Saturn. However, this wasn't your mama Sonic. This would be a new, mature Sonic, someone who grew up alongside the players. So Sonic would be redesigned to look older, the game would have a more fleshed out and serious storyline, even the audio would change, from Sonic's Genesis roots into what we now know as the genre called Sonic Butt Rock. This was the man's Sonic game, and Sega would not mess up as badly as they did last time. They worked their butts off to promote this game, a promotion to rent a Dreamcast from Hollywood Video with a copy of the game, the release of the fabled Sonic OVA, and the creation of Sonic Underground, which was a free fire single with a dog sh show attached. The game would soon come out on September 9th, 1999, alongside its console. Sonic Adventure gave Sega a fighting chance, or at least for a while. This is not the game we're playing today. See, that while that Sega had had run out about two years later as Dreamcasts were discontinued, and Sega officially dropped out of the console market, moving to full-time third-party development. And now that they were publishing for other consoles, they decided to update Adventure to look a little nicer and work on new hardware. This was Sonic Adventure DX, Director's G Cut. This is the version that got released on things like Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation, and is a very divisive port, since it put a lot more problems into the system that weren't there before, made the graphics look a little less appealing, and created a whole lot of glitches that led people who had only played this into thinking that Adventure was always a glitchy mess. However, for the ease of capture, I'll just be using the DX release on PC. So it's finally time to step back into a classic, or a fly riddle dog turd if people dare be believed. This is Sonic Adventure. If there's a better way to judge a Sonic game than by its opening, I don't want to hear it. Really, I don't. This game's opening is definitely nostalgic, but I feel like it focuses a little too much on the color wet and doesn't really give you a good enough look at Sonic for the longest time. It's not the best intro in a Sonic game, but it's certainly up there. Sonic Adventure is the story of Sonic the Hedgehog, a crude blue dude with attitude who finds the top of buildings happening. However, this happening is happening at the same time a monster shows up in Station Square, a water monster named Chaos. Come on, you big drip! It turns out that this is all Eggman's doing, as after saving a crash, Tails, we go back to his workshop and find that Eggman is looking for the Chaos Emeralds to defeat the Chaos to make him perfect. He manages to take our Emerald, and we have to run through levels to get the other ones before he can. It works for a little bit. So we're back to square one and gotta go find even more emeralds, which leads us to meet back up with the blow thrower independent floor master emerald holder, where we oh no our way into losing the rest of our emeralds. After fending off chaos a little longer, Eggman retreats to his massive flying fortress, with Sonic and Tails flying after to take it down. Now that they're separated, Sonic runs through a red mountain and meets back up with Tails in a revamped tornado, which manages to board Eggman's ship. After a dash all around the thing, Sonic not only has to fight Eggman's latest super advanced fighting robot, but the nearly perfect Chaos. However, it along with the Egg Carrier is destroyed in a blaze of real explosion glory. However, Sonic knows better and heads off to the ancient ruins to find out what's going on. But then he's gotta finish off Eggman, ending his journey with one final dust up, with these eggs being anything but over easy. And that's the story of Sonic Adventure. <laughs> Sonic Adventure is the story of Tails. Weird name. He's a fox boy who loves inventing and befriending the homeless. Uh, there's a comma there you're not seeing. 
Tails didn't invent homelessness. He After crashing his plane and being rescued by Sonic, they return to his workshop, only to find Eggman. He steals the emerald they had and finds out about Chaos, a big wet fellow who loves to eat rocks. Sonic and Tails set out to find the emeralds, and like a cho, Tails decides to make a race out of it. He ventures from wind to cash to ice, all before attempting to confront Eggman in his magical flying plane. Then we actually get the backstory of how Sonic and Tails met. One time, Tails was walking, and a parasitic relationship was formed. After rebuilding his flying machine, he tears up the sky deck before helping Amy down from the collapsing egg carrier. However, Eggman escaped too, and he is now going to nuke Station Square with a massive missile! However, lo and behold, the missile is a dud. For now, at least. And after mustering up enough courage, Tails flies out not only to stop the missile, but also Eggman's second final mech. And that is the story of Sonic Adventure. <laughs> Sonic Adventure is the story of that... red guy from Sonic and Knuckles. What's his name? Um... F***ing... Puncho the Magnificent. So Puncho is guarding the Master Emerald before suddenly it explodes and unleashes chaos. And without the Emerald, Angel Island begins to plummet into the Earth. It's up to Puncho to collect the pieces and reassemble the Emerald to raise his home back to the sky. On his journey, he runs into Eggman, who he scuffles with, before Eggman tips him off to the fact that Sonic and Tails are also collecting Emerald pieces. Puncho goes out to tangle with the Terrible Two before realizing he was tricked by Eggman. After Sonic and Tails go to fight Eggman, Puncho decides to go and find the rest of the Master Emerald pieces instead. There he gets whisked to an ancient ruined temple, and then back to the past for a history lesson about his people. He then goes up to the egg carry after realizing that's where the last emerald piece is. After that, he helps Sonic beat the nearly complete chaos and returns to Angel Island, resigning himself to a life of loneliness so nothing like this can ever happen again. And that is the story of Sonic Adventure. <laughs> Sonic Adventure is the story of Amy, the girl from that Sonic game that people say is good, but it's easy to tell when they're lying about it because of the tears welling up in their eyes. Amy is trying to get groceries when a bird hits her and Eggman unleashes the color green on her. Pink tries to recruit Blue to stop Green, but then just kinda doesn't do that. Green takes Pink to Egg, and Egg sends Rob to make sure she stays Pink. Pink says Rob stink, and Rob lets Pink stay Pink. Plane crash, and then Pink comes to exact same revelation that Tails... I mean Yellow did earlier about not relying on Blue too much. Green get bonk, and then all birds go away to be birds. And that's the story of Sonic Adventure. <laughs> Sonic Adventure doesn't have a story. Sonic Adventure is about killing Sonic, so steps are being made in the right direction. You play as E-102 Gamma, part of the E-series of robots that Eggman built to act as his guard and crew on the Egg Carrier. Gamma is woken up and tasked with running the training course to see how effective he is. After that, you throw down with your brother Beta for the final position on Eggman's ship. Once you win, Beta is allowed to stay on the ship to act as spare parts. After that, you're sent out to go get the frog with Chaos's tail on it, so Chaos can be perfect. Once you bring back the right frog, you're tasked with gunning down Sonic. But before you can do that, you have some other stuff you need to do, like allowing Pink to be outside a cage, and coming on what actually happened to Beta. After you beat Sonic, you flee the destroyed Egg Carrier, before realizing that Eggman was a bad guy all along, and Gamma decides to dedicate himself to destroying the other E-Series robots to free them from Eggman's control. After flying through Delta, Epsilon, and Zeta, only one E-Series robot is left. That is, until Beta is reactivated and you throw down with him one more time. After you manage to beat him, he fires one last shot and fatally wounds Gamma, with the two blowing up and the animals inside being free. And that is the story of Sonic Adventure. So yeah, Sonic Adventure clearly is more fleshed out with story than any other Sonic game to this point. It takes full advantage of the hardware to tell a complete story with characters that are more fleshed out for better or for worse than ever before. Some stories are better than others. It's basically first place Gamma and everyone else clawing for second place, but I'll elaborate more later. I really like this method of storytelling. Sonic is a massive cast that all have very different ways of playing, that separating them out into these different sections is not only clever, but helps contextualize other parts of the game. Gamma's first level is Final Egg, the last level of Sonic's campaign, because he lives on the Egg Carrier. Tails and Puncho both have stages that only they go to, but no one else does, because they weren't present at that point in the story. Puncho only goes to levels with big open areas. Big only goes to levels with a lot of water. I think it really complements the fact that not only are all these levels really distinct from one another, but that certain characters get different things out of the same environment. Now, going over how each character plays is a little difficult, since they all play kinda similar, but different, while all going through similar, but not too similar paths. I'll go in the same order that I did before, and talk about their playstyles and briefly touch on their levels. Sonic's all about rushing through stages at the speed of sound, spin dashing for increased speed, and using this newfangled doodad called the homing attack. Press the jump button while Sonic's in the air and he'll rocket towards the nearest bad guy. 
most of the time. Sonic's probably the most fun character to control, help since he's the main one. He's got a great amount of speed to him, a good jump, and gets upgrades that not only make new levels fun to play through, but lets you revisit old ones. Yeah, the characters in this game can find upgrades that enhance their abilities. The Sonics are all about his light speed dash, which lets him charge up a spin dash to fly through a line of rings. It can be upgraded further to charge faster and destroy enemies. As for his stages, Sonic goes through Emerald Coast, Windy Hill, Casinoopolis, Ice Cap, Sky Chase, Twinkle Park, Speed Highway, Red Mountain, Sky Deck, Lost World, and Final Egg. Emerald Coast is your Green Hill stand-in for the game, but at the very least you wouldn't know given the fact that it's not a carbon copy. The beach theme is really strong throughout the whole thing. It has a lot of fun spots for good speed while still having actual platforming challenges, and the beginning of the feud between Sonic and Orcas that's been going on since SummerSlam. Windy Hill is a great stage that, while it doesn't let you speed up as much outside of predetermined spots, it still has a great set piece where you get sucked into a tornado. Casinoopolis f***ing sucks. This is actually one of the worst 3D Sonic stages, and I'm not joking. The whole level is casino pinball tables that let you earn rings to get up a very, very slight incline. These tables are so horrible, since the paddles send you in the exact same direction every single time, so it's not like you can get to any of the new pathways where you get to waste a whole 30 seconds watching them try to make nights a thing! Tails can just fly, lift him up there! However, if you get less than 100 rings on a pinball table, you get sent to an actual level! This isn't much better since it's mostly just made up of sewer tubes, but I'll take anything over the nightmare that is that Sonic spinball send up. Ice Cap is after that, and sadly it's not much better, just a lot of jumping in a single enclosed area with a snowboarding segment. It can be fun, but not when you crash into everything. Sky Chase is really boring, as the last thing Sonic should ever be is on rails. Twinkle Park starts off with a pretty fun bumper car segment, which gives you a different type of speed. The level after that is nothing special, but the carnival theming is really nice, even after Casinoopolis being similar and not that long ago. Speed Highway is probably my favorite Sonic stage in the game. It gives you a lot of places to go fast, some decently challenging platforming, and a great set piece as you run down the side of a building. Red Mountain is pretty cool, just for how different the first and second parts are. Outside, it's a lot of cool set pieces like the zip lines and rockets, jumping around craters and swinging on bars. Inside is a lot more like a death trap with the rising lava and falling rocks. This level's great! Fits that another sky chase comes right after. Just as boring with a lame boss fight afterwards. The sky deck is weird, because I see the idea for a lot of the skips in this level, but it's kind of clunky. I'm sure if I was more adjusted to the adventure jank, I could blaze right through this, and it's certainly not bad, just a little bit too long. Lost World is really gimmicky, since it has very distinct sections. The sections where you run through a tube with a flaming pillar shooting out is really cool! The section on the water stake isn't. The section with the anti-gravity pads is cool! The section with the mirror isn't. The final leg is an appropriate end to the game, since it feels big, climactic, and fills out a long runtime better than Sky Deck. Tails only goes through Windy Valley, Casinoopolis, Ice Cap, Sky Deck, and Speed Highway. Tails is more vertically capable than Sonic, since he can fly, he can skip massive portions of the level. Tails, wait for me! Which doesn't help the fact that all of his levels are races with Sonic. Tails flying is so broken for how much ground it covers that you almost never are in any danger of losing a race to Sonic. He'll rubber band forward from time to time, but that still doesn't put you anywhere close to him. I like this gameplay style because of how fast you can blaze through levels, but at the same time, it's a really hollow experience. Windy Valley and Sky Deck you barely experience, as flying lets you skip most of them. And since the boost rings reset your flight in midair, you get to skip even more! Casinoopolis takes place in the sewer section, so no pinball, so it's automatically better than Sonic's. And Ice Cap is just the snowboarding section. You also have to go through a different snowboarding minigame and the sky chases again, which are no more fun now than they were with Sonic! Speed Highway is the only level where you race against someone other than Sonic, and it's probably the best Tails level. Funny how everyone so far goes through here has their best level here. You get to fly through a lot of the level, but it feels more tailored to Tails' abilities rather than just being a regular level with Tails in it. Puncher the Magnificent is weird, since instead of speeding through the levels, you have to search them to look for missing emerald pieces. He goes through Speed Highway, Casinoopolis, Red Mountain, Lost World, and Sky Deck. Puncho is just as fast as Sonic and has the ability to glide, so his movement options are pretty fun. The scavenger hunt style of gameplay is something that got brought back in Adventure 2, and I'm split on which game does it better. On the one hand, this game has a radar that helps you find pieces. As soon as you're close to one, it starts to beep. In Adventure 2, Puncho can only sense one piece at a time and will ignore the other ones that you're near since it's not in the right order. However, Adventure 2 has a better use of one of the upgrades in this game, the Drill Claw. It's more satisfying to use in the sequel, as this one is just sort of clumsy and weird. Overall, one is an out and out better, but I think I prefer 2's style. Speed Highway exclusively takes place in the second part of the level, and it's easy enough to get you introduced to how Puncho works. Casinoopolis never goes to the pinball table, so it's a massive upgrade! Red Mountain stays in the first act and gives you a crazy amount of room to glide in. I really enjoyed this one. 
and Sky Deck. Well, it kind of makes you fidget with this switch to change the stage a little too much for my liking. Amy is awful. I hated playing as Amy so, so much. She's not as fast as everyone else, except after she runs a little bit and goes into a full sprint. Then your normal hammer attack turns into a massive vault. The only problem is the fact that if you turn even a little bit while in full sprint, it goes away. That means the slightest nudge in a different direction will make you do your normal hammer attack instead of a vault and stop you dead in your tracks. Without full sprint, Amy is unbearably slow. And if you go up slope, she's practically crawling. She goes through Twinkle Park, Hot Shelter, and Final Egg. Twinkle Park is decent and has a cool mirror bit, but Hot Shelter is easily the worst level in the game. It's so long and boring. The place is so cramped and the camera gets stuck on so many things. You bounce against walls, get caught on parts of the environment. It's so incredibly bad and takes forever to get through. I'd rather play the pinball again. Final Egg is okay. Oh, baby, it's finally my turn. I finally get to talk about Big. You're not a real Sonic fan making a video about Sonic Adventure without spending 18 uninterrupted minutes f***ing all over Big. And now I finally get to have my go at it. Yes, yes, yes. I really think I could add anything to Big that hasn't been said already. Well, yes, I can, actually. Did you know that everybody has been playing the Big sections wrong? Yeah, you know how landing a hit on Froggy usually never results in actually getting to reel him in? Turns out if you mash down, you'll almost always get a hit, and then you just have to reel him in. After I figured that out, his sections became a breeze. Honestly, I didn't think Big was half bad when I got to actually figuring out how it worked. It ended up being a quick and easy romp through Twinkle Park, Ice Cap, Emerald Coast, and Hot Shelter. Yeah, it turns out Big is tragically misunderstood. Gamma definitely has the most unique gameplay out of everybody, save Big, with his main weapon being a gun rather than throwing his body at the problem. <laughs> imagine a Sonic character with a gun. Unlike how it's handled in the sequel, the noise it makes is borderline tolerable. And Gamma is a lot more mobile than you'd expect, especially with the hover pack upgrade. Despite being a robot, Gamma really isn't stiff at all. In all the stages he's in, those being Final Egg, Emerald Coast, Windy Valley, Red Mountain, and Hot Shelter, instead of the timer ticking up, it ticks down, giving you only so much time to make it through a stage. Although that time can be replenished by killing enemies in a combo so you build up a chain. Final Egg is simply a tutorial to this type of gameplay. Emerald Coast is fun for how you get to blast through the same lovely scene you ran through with Sonic before. Windy Valley, Red Mountain, and Hot Shelter are fine too. Each character has a slew of bosses they have to tangle with, including Chaos's Zero, Two, four, and six, as well as fighting Eggman in the Egg Hornet, Viper, and Walker. Exclusive to Amy is a fight with Zero the Green Robot, and Gamma fights the four other E-Series robots. Chaos Zero is a matter of being able to do a homing attack, otherwise the rest of the game will never be seen. Chaos 2 is exclusive to Puncho, and it took me a while to realize you get him while in ball form, and it's pretty easy after that. I hate four for the fact that it takes forever to get to the point, and you have to fight him three times! Six is pretty fun for at least having a gimmick and a variety of moves, and is especially good if you fight him as big, since you have to go fishing inside the water monster. Egg Hornet is a pretty standard Sonic boss, Egg Viper is an endurance battle against the boss's weirdly telegraphed attacks and ends in a kamikaze attack, and the Egg Walker is a matter of running back and forth and bopping his ankles. Zero sucks because you fight him as Amy, and save for Beta, all the fights against the E-Series robots are pretty boring. There are also battles against other characters like Puncho and Gamma that are so inconsequential that talking about them would be insulting. If I had to rank each character on how much I enjoyed playing, as them, number one is Sonic, second is Gamma, third is Tails, fourth is Puncho, fifth is Big, sixth is an open spot so I can put Amy even lower, and Amy is number seven. Moving away from gameplay for a little, the presentation of this game is charming if not extremely dated. Naturally, a game from over two decades ago isn't going to look polished, but this game does lack a lot of detail in vital places. Animations are rough, some textures look odd, but for the time, this game looked pretty good. The levels are all flashy and fun to look at, save for some of the Eggman stages being too similar, and all have enough visual flair to make themselves distinct. The characters... well, they all took a downgrade from Adventure to DX, but still look fine. Although I definitely, definitely prefer the original models. The hub worlds as well are pretty fun to explore, the maze of the jungle and the mystic ruins notwithstanding. Not to mention that save for some examples like Sonic trying to find the key card to speed highway, I usually never had any problem finding anything. Save for one character. I don't know what it was about him, but Puncho the Magnificent was such a pain to navigate the overworld with. This game just gives you no idea where to go, so you constantly have to ask for hints to figure out where to go next, but sometimes they're completely useless. There was a section where you get trapped in the caves as Puncho and you have to dig up the monkey destruction switch to get out. Easy enough, I've wielded many monkey destruction switches, but then I was lost! Until I got the hint to use the monkey destruction switch. And then I remembered to get to Red Mountain, you have to destroy the monkey guard. So you have to haul the switch far, far away from where you find it! But that does lead to the fact that the more campaigns you complete, the better idea you have on where to go in the world. You know this door leads to Speed Highway, you know that you need the wind key to get to Windy Valley, you need the button on the top of the sign for Casinoopolis. The layout of the hub is designed that as such, once you learn it, you'll never ever forget it. The audio has to be one of the biggest mixed bags for any game I've ever seen. 
On the one hand, the music in the game is unbelievable. Every track from Red Mountain to Speed Highway, Windy Valley and Final Egg, all bangers. And that's outside of the character themes, which are all amazing. Sonic's Aerosmith ripoff, Tails' weird sort of pop inspirational song, Amy's song, which is just kind of her listing off her entire personality in the most rowdy, nasty way possible. Big's theme sounding like a big comedy fat guy song, which, yeah! And Gamma's being droning and all too melodramatic. Then there's Puncho, who obviously stands head and shoulders above everyone else. When they set out to make a memorable soundtrack, they succeeded! That being said, the actual mixing of that audio is atrocious, and was a problem not addressed in the sequel. To let you know how bad it was, whenever a new character enters a scene, their theme will play. If there's a transition, that theme will restart. You will get very, very familiar with the opening of everybody's themes very, very quickly. I did it all by myself! Speaking of the audio, the voice acting is... Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! Certainly not great, but I feel like it was laying the groundwork for better things. Tails is obviously bad because you don't let children voice children, they're awful and ruin everything, but Sonic and especially Eggman were not only good from the outset, but would improve massively with time. I feel like people really hit their stride by Adventure 2, but it's still pretty rough. Moving into the end game though, once you finish everyone's story, you unlock the secret story, Super Sonic where Sonic and Tails find that Angel Island has sunk again, and Chaos found the last emerald he needed in the crash tornado. Now the whole of Station Square is flooded, and Sonic has to stop him. After him and his friends, and people he's never even met before, give him the power of positive energy, he goes Super Sonic and goes off to take on Perfect Chaos, as Open Your Heart plays in the background. As far as Butt Rock goes, it's not the best, but I still think it doesn't get nearly enough credit. Now this is easily the best boss fight in the game, as it combines both a little bit of challenge with going fast. After exploding out of his brain six times, you take down Chaos and Tikal. Oh, by the way, there was an echidna girl named Tikal who you meet sometimes, it doesn't matter. Return to the afterlife in peace. And that is the story of Sonic Adventure. And also you can raise some chow, it doesn't matter until the next one. Overall, I think this game is still a blast, but I also grew up with it. So I acknowledge that if you're getting into it today, you're probably gonna think it's a massive jank fest. Not helped along by the fact that DX is not a good port. However, it doesn't take a Sonic newbie to see that there are still problems, but you can still like a game and acknowledge the fact that it has faults. Like how the game makes you sit through the credits seven times without the option to skip. Thanks. Wow. So it sounds like that despite realizing that it wasn't as good as when you were a child, you still had an overall good time. That's what I wrote in the script for you to say, yeah. And that makes another satisfied customer happy to have helped. You didn't do anything, I just talked about Sonic. And you couldn't have done it without me. Now, make sure not to get caught liking Sonic again, or it's the death penalty for you. Well, it's not like this is the only game I said I liked. There's more than one Sonic game? Thank you.